There isn't much to be said about Nagoriyuki. He is a vampire samurai from many years ago that fought in the Crusades, and basically, Happy Chaos puts him under his servitude, and then he rebels against Happy Chaos once Happy Chaos is done with him. And they fight Eno. It's pretty simple, but there's a lot more to dig deep into him regarding his theme, so let's go! Hello everyone, this is David Lee Woods with Philosophy of Video Game Philosophy, and this is what I've been wanting to do for a while. So, I'm actually going to have this be a build-up to an eventual video essay discussing Nagoriyuki Slayer, Rachel Alucard, Valganite or Elsing, and maybe a little bit of Giovanna, discussing how vampires and werewolves work in arc system work properties and how they're very reinventive for their archetypes. But I think a lot of the stuff regarding Nagoriyuki comes from these two tracks. Because there's not much about Nagoriyuki in the game. He has darkness inside him, okay? But either way, I'd say that's because I'm very into Jungian psychology and Japanese culture and Japanese emphasis on Jungian psychology, as well as psychology and philosophy, as well as I'm also a singer. Um, I do not know my musical theory as well, but without further ado, we're going to be doing What Do You Fight For? Then afterwards, we're going to be doing Crawl. So let's go. Just, just a little musical note, like, it has this nice, uh, marching sound. It's, it, just, it just sounds like a nice little war march. Everything in this world leads to soul enlightenment. There is nothing wasted about our lives. So, there, everything in this world leads to soul enlightenment. So, Nagoriyuki, even though he's not biologically, I mean, not... Uh, ethnically Japanese, he is 100% trained in the Japanese culture, that is, dead, basically. So, what he's talking about here is, in, in the Zen Buddhist way, because the samurai followed Z Zen Buddhism especially. Which is why Baikin's theme is interesting, because it's not from Zen, a lot of it. But this is definitely the notion that everything is part of the Buddha mind. That everything leads to soul enlightenment, because the the founder of Zen Buddhism allegedly goes back to a person that looked at Buddha holding up a flower and gained instant enlightenment, as we know as in Japanese, Satori, from that flower. So everything in this world has Buddha mind, has this holiness, has Buddha nature. The mountains, the rivers, as Dogen says, the famous Zen master who studied in China. So there's nothing wasted about our lives. It's everything, because everything in Zen Buddhism and Buddhism in general, is holistic, because then comes from Shinto, which is very animistic, and takes from the rest of the world. There's n the world is there's a whole picture of the world, basically. But then, what happens? So, moon eggs, but then there's something wrong. Because the Japanese culture has gone away, and now the snow is falling in spring, and the moon is hanging during the day, which means that things aren't right. But he still is one to self and tie, and he so Nagoriyuki feels everything. He feels even under his little bridge where he slept, he's basically felt everything. He's one with self and time because self is in Buddha in Zen Buddhism. There is such a thing as a self. It's a true self. It's a formless oceanic self. Because uh, in Buddhism, there generally is no self. Anatma, basically. Um, as opposed to Atma, which is the Hindu universal self. Which Buddhism comes from. Buddhism comes from and reforms Hinduism. The Indian religion. Um, but one with self. And so time and being basically come together in this interesting back and forth. Um, how, how can time and being be together? That's Dogen called this time being. Because things happen, but it happens right at this moment. But that exact moment is very much different than what is how you actually are experiencing it. He 
he's basically saying this because he, as we're going to get to, it's going to be a lot clearer when we get to the little nightly news bit, which is the key reason why I love this song. Um, but my doom is that this is the doom of his, his, uh, of his culture, that the culture and the ancient ways will not face their doom. Well done, how dare you, never too late to bend the knee. When you're freezing, so beside your So, that is the most substantive part of this whole song. Basically, what's going on here is, you have this news report, this is the, because, Nagoriyuki basically is an artifact. Nagoriyuki is of, of, of an earlier time. And even though this is not really spoken of, he doesn't really talk about how he hates the present. Um, this basically says, like, he's saying, what is happening is, like, all these modern advancements and oh, it's great. That's exactly what's happening in Japan right now. All these modern advances in Japanese culture, uh, in Japanese, uh, well, not the culture, but in the technology. But what did they let go of? They're destroying, They yes, they, it looks like they have their environment under check, but they killed off one of their gods, the wolf, in both mainland Japan and Hokkaido um, because of science. They've well, the whaling has always been a thing, but they've killed off a few things, and they're dealing with. I mean, they're they're good on keeping maintaining their own environment, but technology wise, they're still big with climate change, and they're also destroying um, other countries in Southeast Asia and and deforesting them, as well as a big thing with palm oil taking that from and killing the habitats of orangutans. That are also have a massive meaning crisis, as we talked about with Must Die, because they've lost touch from their culture. Because in the once the Meiji era happened, they got rid of Buddhism and the samurai culture went away. And then because Buddhism, not Buddhism, Shinto was a state Shinto that was basically manufactured to serve the emperor. That was seen by them afterwards when it was taken away, and by the rest of the world as authoritarian when Shinto has no has no real doctrine. So both of them waded away and although the beliefs have come back and things like these games and other things in Japanese culture have come back, the thing is it's not the same and the, the current industries um, that focus on high rationalism is the issue and that's why Nagori Yuki is the shadow. The vampire is the notion of a watcher of time. The Goryuki has been around for so long. And as Japan has become more and more conscious, more and more rationalistic, Nagoryuki remains the shadow of their cultural past, of their closeness with the earth, of their instincts. But we'll continue and see how the rest of this and the qual expands on that. I'll keep grinding, diving deep like on the seal. I won't face my doom, sayonara. Well done, how dare you? Never too late to bend the knee. When hell freezes, so sayonara. I know the time of darkness will come. So basically, 
yeah, when Time Darkness, that Nagoriuki, Nagoriuki fights only for Happy Chaos because he has to, because he's under a contract. He's He helps fight Happy Chaos in the end. I mean, not Happy Chaos, he'll still fight Eno in the end, so he's a good person. Um, But he will be there to fight off when Japan has become fully unconscious and needs to come back and gain their ways back. And in a way, after the world peace happens, that sort of happens, I think. That there is hope, maybe, for the culture in this universe. So basically, there's a lot. No, what we're really here for is for is for crawl. Crawl has a lot more depth to it. But this song basically, it's time to feast. This is denying the instincts, the connection to nature. The vampire aspect is the shadow, which is the animalistic side, the instincts, and which can't, which which this desire for control takes away. The control of the environment denies the animalistic instincts, the vampire instincts. But I, there's gonna be a lot more of crawl. So. You're, you're, most of you probably want to save for crawl, but if not, hope you enjoyed. But for those who want to stay for crawl, let's go. Hello, everyone, again. If, this, if you just came just for crawl, again, I'm here with my knowledge of Jungian psychology, and we're going to talk about Buddhism and psychology, religion, and all that, and philosophy. Um, but I will not, I will likely repeat, but if there's something I talked about with, with that, and what do you fight for? Please check that out. All right, without further ado, crawl. That was a nice little minute to dig into. So we start off with basically the notion of that. The big thing is, well, let's start with just the infinite storm or nothingness. This is Deishitani. This is the idea that we humans, again, are looking at the world, as we talked about with Zato, in this nihilism. That without God or without religion, we are fundamentally understanding the meaningless and the sufferingness of suffering of existence. So the nothingness, when the emptiness and the hollowness of the self. Yet we find ourselves fundamentally needing to, to find suchness in the nothingness. But we go back and we see that the freedom of the calm, because of course Nagoriyuki is a vampire, he has this, this is his rage and his instincts. 
So how does he retrieve? But there's well, why is he in a rage? He's in a rage because of the modernism and and the culture that the, the new futurism that's happening. So the calm because things are moving so fast that you can't have calm. Instinct and intellect. The fact is that people view in these times intellect and instinct so differently when they really are fundamentally connected. In the Buddhist way, emotion and reason aren't as fundamentally separate. And then what else do we have here? A dead past. Yes, the dead past. So the dead past, of course, as we talked about, exactly there. This fulfills what we talked about last time with, with what do you fight for? This is the dead past. His past of his samurai culture that got wiped away when justice blew up Japan and he lost his culture. Uh, and I have to say again, he is Nigerian, but he seems very, very linked to the Japanese culture, even though he's not ethnically Japanese. Um, yeah. Oh, you without compassion. Then you without compassion. This is compassion, very important for Buddhism. Because compassion, when we rele reach bodhisattva, there's bodhis where's compassion. But you without compassion is fundamentally talking about a world where th there's a you. We view you as a, as someone else. In sort of Martin Buber's idea of ich and du, um, that there's the you, but it's you without compassion. So it's really just viewing them as an it. And that's sort of how Nagor Yugi is being treated as a tool. He's being treated as a tool through technology. Uh, even through this new technological age, because happy chaos wants to now disrupt things and have them be that instinctual shadow that messes things up. So you without compassion, the world is now has left their bodhisattva path and is now just fully viewing things as tools, which is what he's being treated as. The sky above the I'm gonna so a fate of rainbow or so again the fate the, the the future that is the possibility of meaning in our lives but I'm gonna crawl this goes back to instinct and intellect crawl both means that he's just going to go and move as much as he can even if it means crawling but there's also reconnecting with our natural roots and crawling like an animal so when we crawl like an animal we get back to the sort of Taoist way of, of being in touch with the earth and and being away from nature, uh, from the civilized laws, that fundamentally leads us to think in terms of a holistic picture, a nothing, a, a view of nothingness that leads to suchness. If there's anything else we miss, even if it is hell, yeah, even if it's hell, like the world will be hell, might literally look like hell with 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 all the climate, with the wildfires in Hawaii right now, and all over the world with the climate change. But, um, yeah, Let's see if there's anything else. Yeah, I'm not going to be lost. This is with he's holding on to his his convictions that he will not be lost. And I actually do know that this the, the, for, that there's some comments on this video uh, or others that that demonstrate how important the song gets through their anxiety because that is fundamentally outside this Buddhism getting calm, getting with all the rage and anxiety towards the world. You just have calm and you get back. You get back with the flow of things and you don't and you're not lost anymore. Is there any difference between sanity and insanity? When you we put these ideas in our mind of what is sane and insane, and they're what the whole Jungian idea is you do need to get to we don't want to cure people when we do therapy. That what is viewed as insane by society, this was very big with Foucault, is just a label we put on people. Um, but the bigger thing is, yeah, so so fundamentally. There is, we take away these dualities in our minds. Buddhism takes away these dualities. 
But we also have here same old, same old. Exactly, the same old, same old is the idea that that he that he's holding both holding on to his past, but also this new same old, same old of presentism. That now we are forever living in the present. That we move, that we can't move on. That going towards the future actually leaves us in the present, and we don't allow ourselves to have a future, which is problematic because the the up uh, as I said, paradise has already happened, as we said in Raven, and we don't live in the present any we don't live in the future we don't allow for a future we strive for this fake future as opposed to a new one um live on the oh yes it's all in my mind the curse it's, it's all in my mind this is sort of dallas in the sense that the world is not that everything is fundamentally an illusion because of the butterfly dream where one dreams as a butterfly and realizes that it, it might be the butterfly dreaming of them but this actually says the curse is not real. So the, this might be an idea that uh, Happy Chaos has has this curse on him. As this, that this is sort of him freeing himself from Happy Chaos's reins. That is how he gets out of it. That's all in my mind because everything is fundamentally in your mind, and because everything is is transient, nothing is permanent in Buddhism. So if it's everything's in your mind, you can easily meditate and get it out of it and move forward. I'm on the I'm gonna crawl. Like this idea is like now he's going very now the vampire instincts and the instinct is coming in, and now he's feeling like he's getting really angry and this is his vampiric rage. You hear the fury. You hear the fury. gave up hope that he feels like he's there's no possible future for people but there is possibly this is sort of how we deal with with when we again enter nihility and we go forward and we allow ourselves to to accept the way things are because he what this is Nagori is fundamentally accepting the way things are because he has he's accepted he has a robot master he's had it um, he's, he's not actually, he's not a boomer against the culture. I, I, I know that, but that when this is sort of the notion of, um, Aruga Mama, to allow yourself to be in one with the way things are, this is Morita therapy. And this was made by Morita who knew Freud and William James, big figures in psych, um, psychology, Charcot, I think, um, or Janet. And the idea is to get yourself to understand that things are the way they are and there's nothing you can do about it but it's i think it's still different than shigata kanai which is it can't be helped 
because when you accept you, that there are things that you can control and things that you can't control, then you're allowed to actually change what can be changed. Because what he finally gains control at the end, he's allowed to help and gain a better future with Soul and Akai against Eno. That faith that is made of steel. See, he has a very large faith, just like Nagoriyuki does, in that, that the world might be better one day because he's held to his, his ideas. And you can see, I want the freedom. He's like, towards the end, he's like, it's going higher. And he's like, sort of, he's now gone, he's gone through and he's accepted the way things are. And now he's going forward and has a faith that's made of steel that will go forward and allow him to make a better day. Because again, we'll talk only a lot more about the Vampire Shadow when we get to the video essay, which will be after I do... I want to do the Kodomaru essay first, and then we'll do this one. But as Valka and I and Rachel Alucard, those are like my two favorite characters of all time. So I'd love to talk about them. I hope you guys will definitely watch that when it eventually comes out. It will take a while, but... Uh, either way... This has been David Lee's Philosophical Video Game Philosophy. We'll be doing... We got uh, Bang Shishigami, Chip Zana, Big Roar of the Spark coming up sometime. We'll see. I'm not going to keep it op um, keep it exactly firm right now. But I think I'm going to take a little break because I got some things happening. And I gave you a lot for a few weeks. So I know there was a little dry up, but... It took me a lot of time to understand what was going on with Faust, okay? Either way, it's been daily's philosophy, video game philosophy. Peace.